Okay, so now I have new reference. And so what I do is I, I take the reference and I clean it up just a little bit by getting rid of the background around it and moving it up into a corner so I can see it. This works. All right, now I am going to extend my canvas because I need space for these antlers that I'm going to paint in. So I'm going to move it from the bottom and extend its height to about 28 inches. It will keep the same resolution. I'm going to unlock my gray background and fill it again with middle gray. And I'll do the same thing with my white background. Unlock it, edit, fill, but with 100% white. Lock it again. I'm going to call this antler reference. And I'm going to lock my other layers. Now, as digital paintings get more and more complicated, with backgrounds, with multiple characters, things like that, I'd start to group them. So I'm going to take all of the, the pygmy deer stuff that makes this and put it into a folder by selecting them all and clicking on the folder. And I'll call that my my deer or my pygmy deer. Even though it's really, I forget what the animal really was, some sort of dog. A Chinese water dog? Something. And then I'll move these up. And these are going to bug me, so I'll just delete these quickly. All right. So now I want to review the whole kind of painting process. So I can take that whole group and move it. Ah, why are they not working for me? Oh, because they're locked inside. So never mind. So I'm also going to extend my canvas over a little bit to the other side. So I have room for these antlers. So I'm going to move it to the right and grow it to about 19 inches. I should have done that before I added the backgrounds, but anyway. So accommodating for more space. And same thing with white. So you see these basic kind of layer, layering skills, compositing skills come in handy. Now I could unlock all of these layers within my pygmy deer, but then just lock the group. And if I unlock the group, it allows me to move the group all together like that if I need to as well. All right, so now, wouldn't it make sense for me just to do this? knowing what I know about compositing, just to duplicate the antlers, put them on, rotate them a little, and boom. And then I can just erase away the bottom edge. That's why we studied compositing first, because often that skill set will help you with whatever you're doing. But I want to just paint them. So I'm going to use all of the, the different steps that I did for the deer, and we're just going to do, do them kind of faster for these antlers. So what's the first thing I can do? Well, I can make a sketch layer on top. So with my sketch layer, I go to a 100% very simple brush at 100% opacity, 100% hardness, and I pick a color that I'm going to be able to see over my reference that's pretty bold. And then I just basically want to find the big shapes.
and I try to break them into simple shapes as much as possible. With antlers, it's tough. There's just a lot of rectangles, a lot of triangles, a lot of wedges. All right, then I can turn off the reference underneath, and I know basically where I'm painting. So that's my sketch. Then I want to lock it, and I want to lock my reference layer so I don't accidentally paint on that, and even lock this composite layer, which I'm not even going to have turned off. Now, if I'm really, really uncertain of myself, I can do what's called rotoscoping, which some of you have used. And it's where I just create a new blank layer over the top of reference. And then I just steal the color directly from it and paint on the new layer. And that's a technique they use for old special effects. But it kind of takes all of your hand out of it. So instead, the only kind of creative um, instinct you have on it is how you finish it off rather than where you place your strokes and how you play with your lighting. But it is a form of digital painting, to be sure. So if I don't want a rotoscope, I'm going to turn off that reference, and I'm just going to be looking over here and using my basic shapes and stealing colors and trying to get rid of the white, or in this case, the middle gray, with this 100% pretty clunky brush and filling it in. So even though these antlers have these beautiful different textures, I'm just trying to block them in at the moment. Make them my own. Try not to finish anything off too much. And try to establish a darkest dark pretty early on. Now because they're on a separate layer from my my animal, I can warp them and play with them any way I want. But I'll do that after I've blocked in the, what I call the underpainting. And so if you think that your painting just needs something to be more interesting, if you want to add headphones to a portrait or add jewelry or um, a scarf, you can certainly do that. You can take references from multiple sources and put them in. And you can first kind of play with your compositing skills and help it out that way. All right, so now I can get rid of my sketch layer. And I see where I need to fill it in a little bit more. This is the what I call the kill whitey phase. So what it means is when it's on a white background without the sketch, I should be able to see everything filled in even when there's a gray background so that even all the whites are chosen. Okay, now, now that I have that, this is my underpainting. Now I'm going to quickly mess with it using compositing, using transforming and warping, and maybe bring those antlers down a little bit. I don't want them to be symmetrical. I want them to look a little weird, and so they do. Okay, then I can even erase away. I have an auto eraser selected, so let me just use the lasso and just cut away from this part of this antler. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the refined painting layer. So this is my underpainting. I'm going to lock it. And put a new blank layer on top. This will be my refined painting. And I get to use my custom brushes again. 
go to the brush tool, go all the way to the bottom. It will remember it, but I might need to check the settings based on how I used it last time. Always a good idea to check them. It doesn't take long to customize them. Okay, now I'm going to work in between at about 70% opacity. I'm not going to worry about staying in the lines. I'm going to worry about highlights and shadows. I'm bringing those things together. I get to show the little highlight ridge on the antler. And you can see how that brush is giving me a lot more satisfying complexity already. I really get to use my brush strokes to define this form because of all of these little stripes in there. All right, then I will keep building that up. I'm just going to finish out this demo, so another three minutes. And let's see if I can get most of that blocked in with the refined painting. Now, if I decide I want more kind of weirdness in my antlers, I can pick a color, an odd color choice, and kind of throw that in too, throw it into the mix. I've got plenty of odd colors to choose from. But again, this is what I call speed painting. I'm trying to move it pretty quickly. Give it, give all of it some visual interest. All right, I have two minutes left in the demo. I want to make sure that I establish a darkest dark. I've got that here. A high, a brightest highlight. I've got that. I'm on to the last little point. Important to just keep the energy, keep moving through. There is no easy thing to digitally paint. It's just what level you want to bring the finish to. Yellow in. Okay, so those are the main steps of digital painting just flat color and refined painting and just pushing it further and further as you go.